Thank you very much, Tan Sri. Um, I'm a bit reminded of what Gladstone said about the Schleswig Holstein question. That only three people had ever understood it. One was dead, another went mad, and the third was himself, but he's long since forgotten. And apparently, you know, people do remember, and there's a lot about this in, in, in the book, and history is uh, important. So now we're moving to another generation. Um, Daryl, thank you so much for coming in. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> I can't help that one. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Dr. Uh, in your language, thank you. Uh, Professor Andrew Harding, one of my elder, uh, someone I've respected for many, many years, and uh, C. James Massing, uh, Senior Minister from the Sarawak Cabinet. Uh, Professor James Harding, uh, eh, Professor James Chin, sorry, I mixed the two now. <laughs> That's the nervousness of the politician when they're speaking to academics like you all. Uh, thank you, Professor James, for inviting me uh, to give a little bit of thought on uh, the subject and the book that he actually uh, gave me only an excerpt, his full chapter, and I've not read the rest. So it would be unfair if uh, I do mention only his. But I'm promoting his book, 40 bucks outside, <laughs> okay. uh, because he actually speaks what comes from many Sabahans and Sarawakians uh, today. My generation is the 80s generation. We used to have those punk rock hairs and colorful hairs and whatever you want. At that time, when I was growing up, this subject was always spoken of, but never really affected me. I was more interested in you know, the songs of the day and you know, the people of the day and whatever we did at the time. As I grew up and I, as I finished my education, I suddenly had a sense of obligation to do something that many Sabahans, in fact many Sarawakians, have been talking about uh, through the ages and through time and even until now. Um, I believe most of you all have read, have researched and are probably in the know on what are the current feelings of the people in the Borneo states today? I'm sure, right? Mike? Uh, uh, Tansi James Massing mentioned about August 31st being a date that many of us in Sabah are still unhappy about. And I have made a very clear statement of this before I entered politics and even after I entered politics. And as I went to parliament, in my inaugural speech, I made it clear that the 31st of August, celebrated now, is a political creation just to appease a particular uh, movement where the indoctrination, uh, as uh, Professor, uh, Professor also before, Natasi uh, James Masing uh, mentioned, is to make every Malaysian think that the 31st of August is a date for us to, cele to celebrate. I do not agree with that. Uh, I do not agree with what they are doing because we should really talk of Malaysia as being only from the 16th of September, 1963. The agreement mentioned by, by Tan C. James, which is the Malaysian Agreement, 1963, and signed on the 9th of July in the United Kingdom, uh, 1963, was in fact amended also uh, just before the 16th of September. I can't quite recall the circa, but it was just before uh, the 16th of September where the Malaysian agreement was amended to be effective from the 16th of September 1963. Now, without which this amendment would not have been certain. The Malaysian agreement, when it was amended, made it certain for all of us that there was no Malaysia before 16th of September 1963. And that is the basis of our argument today in that particular subject. But I would like to go to a different kind of subject, which is um, currently being spoken about in Sabah today, and also mentioned in this book as I agree is true. There are allegations, in fact, as of last week, made by the Speaker of the House in the State Assembly, to Sri Saleh Tansi Sankawa, where he mentioned that the authorities must be must take action and must be aware that there are many movements of secession in Sabah today, uh, even in Sarawak, I think. Now, 
my opinion of that, and I replied this in the papers last week, uh, was that it's not a fact that it is a secession movement. It is accumulation of anger. It is accumulation of disappointment. People of Sabah, people of Sarawak, in particular, particularly as people of Sabah, uh, they are not happy with the current situation because the younger people are no longer the same younger people before. The younger people of today in Sabah are forced to migrate out of Sabah to work in Peninsula or even to work in Singapore. Now, these two models, Singapore and Peninsula, uh, were part of us in 1963 and Peninsula is still a part of us still today. Now, when these young Sabahans go to Singapore, they see a former partner doing very well. Singapore pays them huge amount of salaries. Singapore gives them a different vision of a country that had no natural resources, and yet they could be where they are today. Now, Peninsula at the same time is the same. When a young Sabahan goes to Peninsula, the first thing he sees is a big airport. He has to handle the prices of the train, uh, sorry, the prices of the taxi or the bus. And when he reaches Kuala Lumpur, he sees a concrete jungle with buildings that he, does, he has not seen in his village. <laughs> Can you imagine this young Sabaha going to Peninsula who does not know where he's going to stay, who's not sure whether or not he's going to get a proper paying job, is now in Peninsula, okay, working his behind out, sorry, <laughs> uh, and looking at himself and saying, hey, I come from, uh, I was told that Sabah is a partner state. Why am I here? And why am I begging for work here? Or why am I, you know, why have I settled down here when I am from a state that formed Malaysia? Now this young Sabahan starts questioning this. This young Sabahan starts comparing what they see in the peninsula. And there is no guidance. Because the guidance that they have is guidance from what they read in the Facebook, what they read, what they hear from their friends, uh, and what they did not know when they were studying in primary schools. What I'm trying to say is this. Our own history books are not saying the right things about the formation of Malaysia. I'm not saying about how we should have been in this promised Federation of Malaysia, but it tells of, of a different history, whereby we go back to what Tansi James Masin mentioned. We are supposed to look at one date, 31st of August, even that Sudirman song, Pandal whatever, you know, um, has become some sort of uh, affirmation, at least for the powers that be, that this is the date that we should look at. Now, this poor Sabahat coming here, to the peninsula. He's going to be faced with higher rentals. I think, and I believe, even a room today costs you four to five hundred a month. Just a simple room. For a West Malaysian that's already heavy, can you imagine the guy who has to fly two and a half hours from the peninsula? With no one and no friends to look at, other than friends he makes when he comes along the way here, and friends that he interacts when he comes here and, and group up. Now, when they come back to Sabah, they're going to talk about what they saw here. And that, believe me, my friends, is going to be built into a movement that is angry. It's a movement that is not happy. This is not what they were told Sabah should be. This is not the Sabah they dreamt of. Especially when they go to Singapore. Uh, Peninsula, you have yet to see an underground uh, station, but definitely in Singapore, you see underground everywhere. Now, when they are kidding that to Sabah, the underground that you see in Sabah, um, of course, we have gas and oil somewhere in our offshore and onshore. So that's the only ground, underground that they speak of today. So this movement that is alleged to be a secessionist movement in Sabah, at least, is not a secessionist movement. I have always taken the position that Sabah should not talk of secession, but Sabah should talk of reaffirmation of our position when we form Malaysia. The Federation was made out of a dream, a dream to balance um, the, the particular races at the time. Of course, we should not be talking of race even at the time, but it was a fact at the time. Uh, they were the convincing argument that uh, President Lee Kuan Yew had 
Prime Minister Lee Kuan Yew had, sorry, at the time was if the North, uh, sorry, North Sabah and Sarawak were to be together in the formation of Malaysia, they will equate the balance of the Malays in Peninsula at the time, Tanah Melayu. And this was agreed upon, so that everybody had this equal chance or equal administration of the state, of the nation, run by people with uh, proper balance in representation. The ideas of Sabahans at the time, or North Borneo at the time, was to be out of the British rule because they already felt they were uh, underclass, the, the second class North Borneo people when the British were ruling uh, Sabah or North Borneo at the time. So they joined up with people who had the same feeling, the Sarawakians, 